Brought to you by Epic Adventure Outfitters. So, when you work at Epic, your work week is never done. We're here on a Sunday. Why are we here on a Sunday and not in church like usual? We got a 4XE. Downside is, by the time we got here, we had no battery power. So, first things first, we gotta go find power. Okay, so we're just cruising down the road in hybrid mode. So, uh, there's three different modes you can drive this vehicle in. Uh, hybrids, uh, mostly using the gas engine and then subletting basically the electric when needed more power and stuff um, also when you apply the brake it does regen and try and put some battery juice back in and there's another mode where you can turn like extra regening power in where if you let off the gas it will start braking for you which to me would be really enjoyable on the trail when coming down mountain switchbacks and stuff instead of using your brakes all the time We finally found ourselves a charging station. Took a while, had some obstacle courses, some speed bumps and a child's daycare in front of it, but we found a charging station. But not just a charging station, we also had to make sure that we fit in at the charging station with the e-car. So we made sure to make a quick pit stop at every electric car driver's favorite place, Starbucks. So the weird thing about the car is obviously you gotta plug it in. So. We didn't lock the electric door, but this is the first Wrangler to have a gas door you can't get in without unlocking it from the inside. So they can't accidentally give you fuel, but I guess they could accidentally plug you in or some random stranger in a parking lot could plug you into something. I don't know. Alrighty, it's plugged in. Some funny lights are going. This is just strange. And like I said, we had to stop and get Starbucks Here you go, sir. so we could properly refuel this vehicle. Cheers. Yeah. All right, now that that's done, got a good nap in, comfortable, full of sugar. We're now gonna continue driving, see how we would like it. So now we've hit the full electric button. Let's see how this is. First off, uh, we're really quiet. Kind of sounds like I'm in a microwave making mac and cheese. KO2s? Jesus. <laughs> Woohoo! That's better than it. You got regen on? Yep. As soon as I let go of the brakes, we'll do it. So, after driving it and charging it, it's actually a little neat little vehicle. It's got lots of cool tech. 
it probably would make commuting a lot easier because eventually you'll be able to take this in the HOV lane. You'll save money on gas going to work and can still go play on the weekends without worrying about running out of electric power. You'll still have gas. I don't know how much yet, but this vehicle has more horsepower and torque than the Eco Diesel. How much you say? 375 horsepower, 470 foot pounds of torque. So the downside of all this is it's heavier. And I don't mean like a little bit, you had a bit too much at Thanksgiving dinner driving home heavier. I'm talking like 870 pounds heavier than the lightest four-door JL. 500 pounds heavier than the equivalent 3.6 Rubicon. To put that into perspective, they could have just put a 5.9 Cummins engine in this and it would have weighed almost the same, but we would have had so much torque and we could have made a lot more racket. This thing makes no racket, no noise. But on the good notes, uh, it gets 42 kilometers on a full charge, driving full electric, apparently. Now, that's 25 freedom miles, if you needed that converted. Let's take a look under the hood, see if we see anything different under this vehicle. All right, here we go. There you've got your normal two liter turbo engine. If you look down, yep, very similar. Got some extra parts over here, but realistically, on first glance, you wouldn't really notice anything different. I imagine all the goodies are underneath, and we'll get to that. So here we got the seats. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is not the floor pan. That is a bunch of batteries. Now, we just thought of a great idea. It's actually quite warm after we charged it and we've been driving a bit, so, if you're one of those minimalist campers, you could get one of these and just bring some Pam or some bacon grease and you could probably cook your breakfast right on this while you're driving. So let's be honest, you didn't start watching this video because you really wanted to learn about the specs of the vehicle and the numbers and all that stuff that we rambled off that are probably lightly, slightly wrong, maybe a little incorrect, but let's be honest, we researched this for about 30 seconds before we got outside. So you want to see what we're going to do to it because you know it's missing something because nobody goes wheeling with 33 inch KO2s, unless you're a Toyota. Now that we've got everything unpackaged delicately, we've got the kit we have decided to put in the first 4xe we got. So, we've decided since it's so much heavier than all the other Jeeps and we didn't want to play the whole spring spacer game with new springs, we are going to utilize the springs the factory has decided will work with it. So we went with a spacer lift. We've got spacers for the front, spacers for the back, bump stops accordingly, sway bar links for both, We've got the sport arms that are a bit longer, so they give you more caster once lifted. Our adjustable front track bar to dial in where its location is. I've then added the rear track bar bracket so we can get that in. And then I got a beautiful set of Falcon 2-1 shocks. These things are hard to come by, unless you're epic. <laughs>
This is shocking. Shocking. And I don't even mean him. Falcon 2.1 shock is one of our most common shocks we put on. Comes with a three year warranty. Has some of the best corrosion protection in the business with the hard anodizing. So it can survive harsh Canadian winters. This ain't Arizona up here. Needless to say, you knew we weren't gonna send this vehicle back with factory wheels on it for a couple reasons. One, they won't fit after the suspension unless you use spacers. We're not a big fan of spacers on the wheels. Second, they're a seven and a half inch wide wheel from factory. That is not wide enough to put a proper 12 and a half inch wide tire despite what the internet forums will tell you. So we decided to do something different this time. This time we went and got a good tried and true fuel wheel that we like, that we've sold a lot of, but we wanted to give it a little bit of a more custom shine to it. So we took it down to our friends at Black Cherry Auto Works and we had them do a little bit of tweaking to the paint scheme. I think you'll like how it turned out. So this wheel turned out better than we could have imagined. It is phenomenal what happened. So we took an anthracite fuel kicker five um, so we've got the gun metal and then the black ring and then we had just the face and parts of the center cap Painted to match the decals on the 4xe which happened to be Chrysler surf blue and it pops I can't wait to get this on the vehicle and driving and see different shadowing on this wheel It is gonna be phenomenal. I have a feeling it's this is gonna be the last wheel. We start custom painting um, Just to change it up since a lot of people are starting to see the same wheels over and over again out this is fixing it. Now for the tire, we chose the Nitto Exo Grappler. There's a couple reasons we did this. One, if this vehicle happens to end up in the hands of someone that likes to go skiing in bad weather, drive our highways that have snowflake requirements and all that other stuff, this will get you through any bad weather driving you could possibly throw at it. To the point you can stud these tires if you choose to, and they have a good rolling resistance. So this will help us not only get to our destination, no matter how rough and far away it is, but It'll hopefully help keep our mileage down. Thus, you know, the whole reason you're buying the 4xE in the first place. So let's see how they look when we put them on. Okay, before we get to putting on those nice new wheels, we have another part we need to install first. So I know some of you are gonna be like, what are you doing, Ginger? You never put drive shafts on things most of the time. And you're probably right, because most of the times they're not required. So due to this being the electric, four by E, the transmission being longer, the transfer case being in a slightly different position. This custom drive shaft we had made up this week is a requirement. I'll show you how close the clearance is when it's hanging at droop and that's not even the sway bar disconnected. Okay, as you can see, this is at full droop on the hoist and it's basically touching at the transfer case side of the front drive shaft. So you can imagine what could possibly happen if you disconnect your sway bar and we're off-roading pretty good. Okay, now that we got the drive shaft out, you can definitely see the difference. Stock drive shaft, Zeppa joint, aftermarket drive shaft, double carton joint. This will help us get that angle we need in order to use this. 
Uh, all sealed Spicer U joints, but double carton joints do need greasing. So we paint mark where the grease fitting is. And at the other end, we have a greasable slip yoke and a sealed U joint. And luckily you can use basically a stock flange on the other end. So it just bolts right up to the front diff. As for the transfer case, we have to switch the yoke to a new style yoke that'll hook up to the double carton joint. Then try and line it up. Do a rehearsal. Yeah, I spin it like that. Okay, now that we've almost buttoned this whole vehicle up, we have the spare mounted on the TerraFlex tire carrier, so it'll at least properly house the camera, quick removable third brake light, and it'll hold up to a 35 without any more hinge reinforcement. Um, they have a really nice unit coming out in the next month and a half that will allow you to hold up to a 40, replaces the whole hinge, nice cast piece of aluminum. Uh, we've been really excited to get that in our hands soon. Um, but what we have managed to do, which most of you probably didn't know, is we've managed to maintain the full electrics exhaust system. Yes, I said exhaust system. You can see right there, there is the speaker that makes the spaceship noises while you're backing up. Just so the people that you run over think aliens did it. So in closing, I've been driving this for a couple days now. It is fun. It's almost like playing a video game because you can basically control what it wants to run on. Electric, hybrid, e-save mode. It's kind of like a game, seeing how long you can get it to go. Um, it rolls great with the suspension. There's like no resistance in the tires for the all-terrain we got on it. I think it's gonna be a model that picks up and goes. So final thoughts, if you haven't driven one of these or seen one, Visit your local dealership if you're not close enough to come to White Rock Dodge, because I know they have one here. I don't know for how long. Take and bet, some people think about two to three hours, but we'll see. Maybe somebody here just takes it and buys it instead, and then ends up here all the time. Thanks for following along. Be sure to subscribe for more epic adventures.